Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In the previous video, we added the custom design to our Blogger homepage and this is how it looks right now. Now in this video, we will make this contact form work and we'll also fetch the posts that we have in our Blogger website over here instead of these posts over here. So we will do all of that in this video. Let's get started. <laughs> So here I'm in the dashboard of my blogger website and let's go over here to pages and let's go to the main page. So this is the custom home page that we created. Now the first thing we will do is we will make this contact form work. So for that you need to go over here back to the dashboard and you have to go over here to layout and you have to click on add a gadget and you have to select contact form. So let's select this gadget right here. And then let's click on save. And here we can see that the contact form is added in the sidebar. If you go back to our website and uh, if I just zoom out a little bit, we can see that we have the sidebar displayed over here and we have the contact form displayed. Now if I click on send, we can see we have this error. So the contact form is working. If we add some valid details over here, it will be sent to the email associated with this blogger account. So now what we need to do is we need to get the HTML code of this contact form. So you have to right click over here and go to inspect. And here we can see we have this form. So in the form you have to right click and click on edit as HTML. And here we can see we have the HTML of the contact form. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. So I just press command A and command C to copy it. And let's go back and let's go to our page and let's scroll down and let's go to the contact section. So it is right here. We have the contact section. So I'll just make some space over here and I'll just add the contact form HTML that we just copied over here. And now if we update this, and now if you go back to our website and if I reload this page, here we can see after this contact form, we have this contact form over here. Now what we need to do is we need to get these input fields and this button and also this error message and we need to add them over here. So we will have the styling of this contact form but the functionality of this contact form. So further let's go back. So let's go ahead and copy this input field from here. So this is for contact form name. So I'll just copy this and I'll just replace this over here. So let's cut this and paste the input field from the blogger contact form. And let's go ahead and copy the input field for the email. So this one is the email. So let's copy this and uh, let's go ahead and paste it over here. And then we have the text area for the message. So let's scroll down and here we have this text area. So let's copy this and uh, let's paste it over here. And then we have this button. So let's scroll down and for the button we have this input tag with the type of button. So let's copy this and let's go ahead and paste it over here. And now let's also paste the error message. So we have this division over here. So let's copy this division from here and in that we have the error messages. So let's paste it just inside the form. So I'll just paste it over here and we can just go ahead and delete this CSS from here. Now here we already have this text because we have directly copied this HTML from the sidebar. So let's go back to the sidebar and now let's copy this when we don't have any errors. So let's right click and go to inspect and in the form let's edit as HTML and let's scroll down. And now we can see that we don't have the message over here. So we just need to have the paragraph for error message and success message. So let's go back. And let's go ahead and delete this content inside the paragraph. Right now let's go ahead and delete these classes from here. We don't need them because these were the classes for the blogger theme. And now let's go ahead and click on update. And let's go back to our page and uh, let's reload this page and let's scroll down. And here we have the contact form and uh, we have the correct design over here. And these input fields are basically the input fields from blogger widget. 
right now let's go ahead and add the placeholders over here so for the first one we need to have a placeholder of let's add your name and for the second one let's add a placeholder of your email and for the third one which is a text area let's add a placeholder of your message and let's save this and let's go back and let's reload this page and now we can see we have the placeholders now we need to style this button so if you go back to our design and if you scroll up and go to the CSS here for the contact form we can see that we are adding some styles to the BTN class so let's go ahead and add a class of BTN so here for the input of type button let's type class BTN and let's click on update and let's go back and let's reload this page and now we can see that we have the correct styling for the button so let's click on this button and we have this error message you can go ahead and style this as well if you want I'll just leave it as it is right now let's add some test data over here and uh, let's add some message and let's click on send and here we can see that the message has been sent but here we can see after the message was sent the styling of the button has changed so let's right click and go to inspect and now we can see that we don't have the class btn over here it has been replaced with these classes so what we need to do is we need to target this input field without the class so we need to target it with this type of button so for that let's go back and uh, we can just go ahead and delete this class and let's go to the CSS and here in the contact form I'll just type input of type button and even for the hover let's type input of type button and now let's go ahead and update this and let's go back and uh, now we have this style for the button but we don't have the exact style that we need so if you go to our original design here we can see that for this button we have some more styling so that's because we have a class of btn for this button now we cannot add the class btn over here in this blogger website because it is being replaced so what we need to do is uh, we need to go to the btn class and we need to copy the styles from here so let's copy all of this and let's scroll down and let's go to the contact form button and let's paste the styles over here and i'll just remove the styles that we don't need so here i'll just remove the padding from the top because we have the padding over here and then we have the border radius and we don't need this background color of yellow and we can also remove this display of inline block and we can also remove this text decoration and uh, let's remove this color because we already have this color over here and uh, I think that's basically it so let's click on update and let's go back to our website and let's reload this page and now we can see we have the correct style over here so we can also add this send message text over here so let's go back and here in the value let's type send message and let's go back and let's reload this page and uh, we have the send message text now let's go ahead and add some data so I'll just type some name and email and let's type some message over here and let's click on send message and now we can see that the message has been sent and this message will be sent to the email id linked with this blogger account now we can go ahead and delete this contact form so let's go ahead and delete this form from here and now let's go ahead and click on update and uh, now we can see that everything is looking all right so the contact form is also working correctly all right now let's also display the blog post from this website over here so if you go to the list of blog posts so for that you can go to index.html page i'll just go ahead and copy this link and let's add the link to this blog navigation menu so let's go back and let's go over here to the nav menu and here for the blog let's change this to the link and let's do the same for this link over here and let's click on update and let's go back to our home page and uh, let's reload this page and now if you click on this blog here we can see that the list of all the blog posts are displayed over here now we need to display these three latest posts over here in the home page so let's go back to the home page and uh, here we will display 
the latest blog posts so let's go back to our home page and this is the blog section and uh, we have this container division with a class of cards container and right now we are populating the blog post with the javascript so let's scroll down and uh, here we can see we have this array with the name blog data and in that we have all the details of the blog posts so let's scroll down and uh, here we have this function where we are creating the html of the blog content from this array so now let's go ahead and fetch the details of the blogger website so for that let's go ahead and type const and i'll just call it response equals and uh, we will use the fetch method so let's type await fetch now since we are using await we need to change this function into an async function so let's type async and here in the fetch we need to type the url of the home page and forward slash feeds forward slash posts forward slash summary question mark and we need to get three posts so let's tap max results equals three and we need to get it in json format so we need to tap ampersand alt equals json now this will give us the response so let's go ahead and store it inside a const called data and let's set it equal to await response dot json and now let's go ahead and console.log this data and let's see what data we get so let's tap console.log data data and let's click on update let's go back to our page and let's go to the console and let's reload this page and here we can see we have this data and in the data we have the feed and in the feed we have the entry and in the entry we have these three posts so here we can see we have the title the summary and the link and all these things over here so we need to get the details from the entry which is inside feed so here we can just go ahead and create a new const and let's call it all posts equals data which we are getting from here dot feed dot entry and now if we just go ahead and console.log this so let's tap all posts update and let's go back to our page and let's reload this page and let's go to the console and now we can see that we have all the blog posts displayed over here and now we can go ahead and get these details and add it to the html so the first thing we need to add is the thumbnail so the thumbnail is uh, inside this media dollar symbol thumbnail so the first one doesn't have the thumbnail so for the second one we need to go into media dollar symbol thumbnail and in that we have the url so this is basically the url of the thumbnail so let's go back to our code and here instead of looping through the blog data we'll just loop through this all posts so let's go ahead and type all posts and i'll just delete this console.log from here and now we can go ahead and delete this blog data array all right now let's go ahead and first of all let's get the thumbnail now there can be situations where thumbnails are not available so let's go ahead and store it inside a const and i'll just call it thumbnail url equals and first of all let's check whether we have the thumbnail so let's tap b because for each of the posts we are calling it b so let's tap b dot and in that we had media dollar symbol thumbnail and let's tap question mark so if we have the thumbnail then let's go ahead and tap b dot media dollar symbol thumbnail dot url and if you don't have the thumbnail so let's tap colon we'll just pass an empty string all right so let's go ahead and instead of b dot thumbnail let's use this variable so let's type thumbnail url and then we have the title so let's see what is the title called so i just go ahead and console.log it once again let's go back and reload this page the title is called title dollar symbol t so let's tap b dot title dot dollar symbol t and uh, then for the summary we have summary dollar symbol t so let's tap b dot summary dollar symbol t and then we have the link so let's see how is the link being displayed over here so for the link we have this link and in that we have this rel of alternate and in that we have the href so this is basically the link 
so we need to go into link and we need to find the rel which has a value of alternate and from that we need to get the href so let's go back and here let's tap b dot link dot find and here let's tap link link dot rel equals alternate so we need to find the link with a rel of alternate and if we have that then let's tap dot href all right now let's go ahead and click on update and let's go back to our home page and let's reload this page and now we can see that the blog posts are displayed over here but the thumbnails are not clear so if you go back and if you take a look at the link of the thumbnail this is the thumbnail so i'll just open this in a new tab now here we can see this is the thumbnail so this is what we are getting when we access the json data now the problem is that it is set to s72 so this is basically the resolution so we need to change this to a greater value so for example if i just tap s500 then we will have a better thumbnail so we need to replace forward slash s72 with forward slash s500 so let's go back and here for the thumbnail let's type url dot replace and we need to replace forward slash s72 with forward slash s500 and let's click on update and let's go back to the home page and let's reload this page and now we can see we have better thumbnails and uh, now we can see that these summaries are a bit too long so we'll just limit it to maximum three lines so let's add a max height over here the summary is basically inside the card division so here we can see we have the card division and that we have this paragraph so this is basically the summary so for that let's go to the css and here let's type cards container card p and uh, let's tap max height and let's set it to 90 pixels and uh, let's tap overflow to hidden so everything outside this 90 pixels height will be hidden so let's click on update and let's go back to our home page and let's reload this page and now we can see we have three lines of text so everything is working all right now when we don't have a thumbnail it will display this type of image over here but you can also go ahead and create a proper placeholder image and you can provide that over here so here instead of this empty string you can just provide the link of the placeholder thumbnail so then if you don't have a thumbnail then it will display the placeholder thumbnail over here and let's also click on this read more button and let's see whether the link is being fetched correctly so let's click on read more and we can see that we are taken to that post let's click on read more for this post best image generation tools and we can see that we are taken to that post so everything is working all right so that's basically how you can completely customize your blogger homepage. so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day